Uh, welcome everyone. My name is Meerish Fak and I am a PhD student in the Department of Metallurgical Engineering and Material Science, Indian Institute of Technology, Bombay. So today I am going to briefly explain about the development of higher order formalism in metallic systems. So as far as these metallic systems are concerned, so we usually deal with the alloys. So alloys are basically uh, solid solutions. So in case of an ideal solution, the activity is always equal to the mole fraction. But in case of non-ideal solution, so there is a deviation from the ideality and in such kind of solution, the activity coefficient can be uh, uh, represented by an infinite Taylor series. That is a Wagner's Taylor series that is shown here in equation first. So here the nth differentials can be represented by the symbolic representation as shown below. So there are basically different formalisms that are used in the uh, ternary solution. So one of the popular one is the darkens quadratic formalism. So in such kind of formalism, so basically there is an expression that uh, represents the excess free energy of uh, excess free energy of the system. So again, for example, if we increase one order, so if we have a third order polynomial, basically that represents the excess free energy of the system. So then we uh, move on to the cubic formalism, and again if we increase by one order, then we go to the quadratic formalism. So from all these formalism, if we have to obtain the values of FTD coefficient of either solute or solvent. So what we have to do, we have to uh, multiply it with the, uh, first we have to divide it with this uh, uh, gas constant and temperature and then we have to partially differentiate it with that. Uh, then we have to multiply it with the total number of moles and finally we have to partially differentiate it with respect to Ni where Ni represents the number of moles of either solvent or solute. So for example equation 5 and 6 and 7 are obtained from equation 3 by using equation 4 and uh, finally in case of for example similarly in uh, cubic formalism we have a third order polynomial that represents the activity coefficient of uh, sorry that represents the excess free energy of the system again if we have to uh, obtain the values of uh, activity coefficient of solvent solute 2 and solute 3 uh, we have to go through the same procedure formalism we can again for example there is a polynomial of degree 4 if we have to obtain the values of uh, ln gamma solvent, ln gamma 2 and ln gamma 3, then we have to basically uh, different, then we have to first we have to multiply it with the total number of moles and then we have to differentiate it again with respect to n2, n3 and n gamma solvent and we will obtain these expressions here. Now, now using for example such kind of formalisms and using such kind of procedure, we obtain the basically the interrelationships. In case of Darkens quadratic formalism, there is a direct relationship between the second and the first order interaction parameters. So, in case of, for example, cubic uh, formalism, we also obtain the interaction between third, second, and first order interaction parameters. So, in case of fourth order interaction, param uh, fourth, uh, sorry, four quadratic formalism or the fourth order truncation of the Taylor series, we obtain the interrelationships. The so same type of basically these interrelationships are obtained. If we consider the thermodynamic consistency in the Wagner Taylor series, basically that is not thermodynamically consistent you know, uh, except an infinite Taylor series, but we can make it thermodynamically consistent. That means we can, uh, that means it should obey the Gibbs Dream equation. By using the Gibbs Dream equation, by obeying the Gibbs Dream equation, there are basically interrelationships, and those interrelationships are basically obtained in such case also. If we, for example, go through the normal route of by partially differentiating the polynomial. Now, if we have to see the practical utility of such formalisms, so we have taken the example of nickel, chromium and iron systems where uh, basically uh, we have obtained the values of ln gamma solvent, uh, basically uh, uh, using the cubic, quartic and the uh, quadratic formalism. Here uh, we have obtained the close uh, values, uh, the experimental values and the calculated values in case of uh, cubic formalism. But here the case should be uh, quite different. It should be basically quartic formalism because a higher order formalism is much much accurate than lower order ones. But because since there are too many interaction parameters in quartic formalism, so there are basically 12 interaction parameters. So to obtain the uh, accurate values of all the 12 interaction parameters, so it is very difficult. So there are basically inaccuracies as well. So that's why cubic formalism shows much much better accuracy than uh, you can see much better uh, results than uh, quadratic and quartic formals. Now, uh, we can at last uh, uh, draw some conclusion. So basically for an nth order uh, truncation, we basically do not need the nth order interaction parameters. So they all can be obtained from the lower order ones. 
So also, for example, for an nth order truncation, basically there are m square plus 3 n uh, interaction parameters. So if we talk, uh, for example, the case of uh, cubic formalism, so there are basically 18 interaction parameters. So they all just reduced, uh, they all just reduced to seven. Similarly, in case of aquatic formalism, there are 28 interaction parameters. They just reduced basic to n. So as I have already mentioned, basically that the calculated values of this lang gamma solvent uh, using cubic formalism shows much much closer to the values of uh, experimental data than quadratic and uh, than quadratic and quartic ones. It's quite evident that quartic should be always better, but just because there are more interaction parameters, so there are obviously more and more uh, uh, can say it, uh, inaccuracies, uh, and uh, the values of the interaction parameters are not accurate. That's why there is uh, wide deviation in such case. Well, thank you. We can go through this paper as well.